Hello everyone. Welcome to our next series on Angular State Management with NGRX by FAD Learning. In Angular, state management refers to effective data management. So throughout this series, we will dive deep into Angular data management using NGRX, covering all the essential concepts you need to know. And just like our previous Angular tutorials, this series will combine theory as well as practical implementation, helping you to prepare for interviews and real world projects. So as an Angular developer, having NGRX skill can be a valuable asset, even if we don't need it for every Angular project, because not all projects involve complex data management. And NGRX is particularly useful for complex applications with multiple data sources, where data management plays an important role. So let's get started with the introduction to NGRX. Under this, we will cover what NGRX is, why Angular developer need it, and additionally, we will explore the principle of NGRX. So what is NGRX? NG stands for Angular and RX stands for Reactive Extensions. So NGRX is a state management library for Angular applications that helps to manage complex application state and improves application performance. And it builds on the principle of Redux, which is also a popular state management library used in JavaScript applications. So by combining Redux principle with Angular strength, NGRX provides a specialized state management solution for Angular application. However, to learn NGRX, you don't need prior knowledge of Redux, but you must have a solid understanding of Angular. So let's move forward. Assuming you have a solid fundamental in Angular development. Why do Angular developers need the NGRX library? Let's understand this with a diagram. Consider this is an app component with two child components, user component and product component. And each of these component has its own child components like user1 and user2 are the child component of user and product1 and product2 are the child component of product. And here, if user1 or user2 component wants to share data with a user component, then we can achieve this by using at the rate output decorator. And if user component wants to share data with user1 or user2 component, that also we can achieve by using the decorator at the rate input due to their parent child relationship. Similarly, product1 and product2 component can share data with product component using at the rate input and at the rate output decorator. But in large applications with complex hierarchies, there are often multiple components and data sharing between them can get complicated. For example, what if the last component user2 needs to share data with product2 component? Since these two components don't have the parent-child relationship, so in this case, we can't use at the rate input or at the rate output decorator directly. And this is where NGRX comes into play. It helps to centralize data and enables communication between unrelated components. Therefore, state management is used to transfer data between component in large application. And for small application, we can transfer data using at the rate input and at the rate output decorators and using services. But for complex application, we should use NGRX for state management or data management. So this is how you can explain the need for NGRX. Now, let's move forward and understand the principles of NGRX. But before diving into NGRX, let's quickly understand the principles of Redux. It is an open source JavaScript library for managing application state. And Redux is based on three main principles. First, single source of truth called store. The state of the entire application is stored in a single object. Second, state is read only, meaning the state cannot be changed directly. Instead, actions are dispatched to trigger changes. And third, changes are made with the function called reducer. Reducers are pure functions that take the current state and an action and return a new state. Now, Keeping these three Redux principles in mind, let's explore the NGRX state management lifecycle. 
NGRX follows the principles of unidirectional data flow, making it easier to manage and synchronize the state of an Angular application. And the main section of NGRX is store, which holds the entire application state. And an Angular application, multiple components interact with the store. For example, consider a counter functionality. So for that, this is the counter component. And the counter component requires two actions, increment and decrement. And the application state is updated in the response to these actions. So here, the reducer contains the logic for holding these actions and updating the state. And once the state is updated, it's stored in the store. And to access the updated state in the component, we use the selectors, which receive data from the store. So this is the high level overview of how NGRX works. Additionally, NGRX has another building block called effects, which handles complex actions like interacting with the backend API through services that we will explore practically later. But for now, we will focus on understanding the main architecture of NGRX. I repeat, in NGRX, the state management life cycle starts with an action being dispatched from the component, which triggers a reducer to update the state based on that action. And the updated state is then stored in the store. And this is a centralized storage for the application state. Then components use selectors to retrieve the necessary state from the store and update their UI accordingly. And lastly, effects handle side effects like API calls, ensuring the predictable and scalable state management process. So this life cycle ensures that state changes are predictable, making it easier to manage complex applications and debug issues. So with this, we have covered the basics of NGRX. Now last, let's discuss when to choose NGRX and when to choose Redux in your applications. Both NGRX and Redux are state management libraries that help to manage global state in applications. While Redux is a general purpose state management library and NGRX is specially designed for Angular applications. So first let's discuss when to choose NGRX. First, we should choose NGRX when building complex Angular application with global state management needs. Next, we should choose NGRX when using TypeScript and wanting to leverage its type safety feature. And third, we can choose NGRX when looking for a simpler store setup process with built-in features like effect and selectors. So NGRX is a good fit for these three scenarios, complexity, TypeScript, and simple. Now, when to choose Redux? We should choose Redux when building applications with non-Angular frameworks or when working on non-Angular projects. We can also use Redux when needing a general purpose state management solution that works seamlessly across multiple frameworks. So in these two scenarios, Redux is a suitable choice. And ultimately, the choice between NGRX and Redux depends on the specific needs of your application. So that is all about the theory behind NGRX and I hope you understand it. In the next video, we will dive into the practical implementation by adding NGRX to an Angular application. Thank you for watching and if you find this series helpful, please consider subscribing to stay updated. I appreciate your time and support for FAD learning. Thank you. Bye-bye.